Okay, so in the last tutorial, we uh, just sort of got a general overview of, of what's in the conveyor profile. In this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and, and build a conveyor from scratch. And in the subsequent tutorials, we'll show you how to uh, go ahead and import a conveyor from, from AutoCAD as well as some other options. But in this tutorial, this is, this is kind of the, the ground-based fundamentals of, of the profile, you can say. So let's go ahead and, and fire up Sidewinder again. And in this case, rather than starting with one of the predefined conveyors, I'm actually going to go up here to the very first one and just start with an empty, completely empty conveyor. When I hit continue, it gives us essentially 10 elements to do with as, as we please, whatever we want. Now I'm going to enter just the simplest of simple conveyors. I'm going to say that we maybe have a 100 meter long conveyor. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to right click and say that we've got uh, on the second element I'm going to put a motor. I'm then going to manually make our return side. We go back 100 meters and then I'm going to put a take up. Right click here and put a take up pulley. That's it. That's my conveyor. Now these extra elements here we don't want. We don't actually have elements here. And this is also another point I want to always mention. The Sidewinder always, in Sidewinder, you always have to start at the first element on the carry side. And it always go to the right. I.e. I can't build my conveyor starting and going in the minus 100 direction. Your conveyor always gets built, oops, sorry, 100 here, always starts at the tail pulley and goes to the right. It's just a, a built-in convention that we have in Sidewinder that you have to follow that, you know, it's just the way we do it. Now these extra elements here, we actually don't need these. I'm going to go up here and just click delete and just delete each of those elements. So this is pretty much as simple as, as, as we can get. We've got a conveyor that goes over 100 meters. We've got a motor. We've got an element that goes back to the tail. And then we've got a a tail pulley. Well, happens to be our, our take up pulley. I could go ahead and run the calculations on this. If I click run, it's actually going to solve these calculations. And if I look at the case, we've got a conveyor that happens to be pulling about uh, 17 kilowatts of, of power. Uh, I guess we've specified or we've selected coal at a thousand tons per hour. I mean, I could change my, my tonnage to say 200 tons per hour or 2,500 tons per hour, whatever I want. Click run. And you can see we can actually work with this conveyor. And if we look at our, our loading plot, we've got a conveyor that's loaded 100 meters long. So let's go back. I just went back by clicking on the conveyor geometry here, back to our geometry page. And let's get a little more involved with this. Well, normally on a conveyor, we've actually got to have, uh, we probably have a transition length here uh, that it transitions. We've probably got a feeder station. Um, maybe our conveyor isn't flat. And we've got some geometry to it. So let's go ahead and just manually enter that. Well, what I could do is I could insert a flight above here, or let's say that our conveyor really is 100 meters long, but perhaps our feed point starts at about 5 meters. So what I'm going to go up here is go up here and click this Divide button. And I'm going to divide this. Uh, I'm going to sec choose a second option to divide this into two elements. And the first element length, I'm going to make 6 meters. When I divide that, you can see it took that element. We still have a 100 meter long conveyor, but it just simply cut that into two pieces, the first being 6 meters. Now at that point, let's say we have a loading station. Maybe our loading station is, well, let's say, 10 meters. I'm going to go ahead and divide this again. And the length, the first length I'll make is 10 meters. There we go. So we've got a 6 meter section and a 10 meter section. Now this is actually our loading point. So we want to come over here and say load point. If we hadn't specified a loading point, Sidewinder will just by default, it'll start loading the conveyor on the first element. Now in this case, this first element will be empty and it'll start loading the conveyor at, at the load point and it's going to put 100% of the load at that point. We'll get into uh, looking at different loading uh, percentages. I guess I can talk about that real quickly. Uh, for example, if we had maybe two loading points, we could say we could put that this loading point is loaded 50% and then make another loading point down below and, and load that one at 50%. Uh, but we'll discuss that in a later tutorial. At this point, we'll just assume one loading point and it's 100% loaded. 
Now let's say maybe uh, this conveyor actually discharges onto another conveyor that's uh, three meters up in the air. And that starts at perhaps the last 20 meters. So we're going to take this at 80 meters here and in incline that 20, 20, uh, uh, 4 meters. So if I click on element 3, I'm going to divide that. In this case, I'm going to make the second element length 20 meters. Oops, and click divide. And again, all this is done, done is just keep splitting up our, our same element that we have. Now got 20 meters, and what did we say? I think we said that's going to go up 4 meters. And there we go. Now you'll see something strange has happened here. Our return side we haven't changed. We had this as minus 100 meters. Well, now that our profile has changed, we have to manually change this return side. Now, I'm going to show you how we do this. Actually, we don't have to do this. We can create what's called just a single return element, and that'll automatically do all this for you. But just to show you how this works, we're going to do one of these by hand. So in this case, our element, we actually have to insert another element above here. We're going to say we're going to go back 20 meters, down 4 meters, and now this is now minus 80 meters. And that's, we just manually had to go in and put in each of these elements to map our carry side back to our tail pulley. Okay. Now that's obviously a lot of work because if I came up here and let's say that I didn't have this simple conveyor, let's go ahead and, and divide this into, I'm going to divide this into three sections. And I'm going to say the first element is 25 meters, and that goes over, uh, well, let's say that's flat, and the next section is 45 meters, and maybe goes up uh, 3 meters, and then let's go over 20 meters, and let's go down 3 meters. So you can see I've got this just profile that I've entered. Well, we don't want to have to manually go in and enter each one of those elements. I mean, we, we certainly could. I could go ahead and, and now at this point I could insert below and say, okay, we went over our 20, now we've got to go back 20, and we've got to go up 3, oops, sorry, minus 20. And we could go through and map each one of those elements back. But that's obviously a lot of work, and if we change something on the carry side, we have to go back and change that on the return side. Again, that's a lot of work. We don't have to do this. So there's a special element that we can use that's simply called the return element. If I go up to this after the motor and I click return element, what that will do is that will automatically map all of our carry side back to the tail pulley. In fact, I can go ahead and say delete and delete. And this has created our return element back to our take up pulley. And now here's where the trick is. Um, we've got to tell the return where it's going to end. In our case, we started at 0, 0. We're going to end at 0, 0. So if I just take these last two elements and make them 0, 0, you can see it nicely has mapped. This one little element has mapped back our whole return side for us. If I go up here and I change this from up maybe 3 meters to 5 meters, again, it's, it's automatically changing. If I go up here and I delete this flight, doesn't matter. It's automatically adjusted our return side for us. If I go up here and I insert a couple more elements, I just inserted two rows up here and say we go over 60 meters, up 3 meters, I'll go over 20 meters, I'll go down 6 meters, whatever. You can see it's automatically creating this whole return side for us. So this return element is, is pretty slick. Now obviously there's going to be cases that you might, maybe your drive station was back here at 80 meters, in which case you might have to manually enter some some elements in here back to where your drive station is and then put in your drive station and then continue back. Um, I'll show in a, in a later tutorial, we can actually use multiple return elements. So we could come back to here and say, okay, create a return element back to station 80. And then we can enter our drive station and then create another return station back to zero. So you can actually use multiple returns. That's a little more advanced feature. But this is a is, is a powerful feature and, and really understanding the return element is is perhaps the hardest part of, of Sidewinder, but once you understand it, it's it's pretty simple. All it simply does is wherever you start at, it maps an element back to whatever the next station and elevation are. Um, in this case, it's going to map back to 0, 0 and minus 0.8 meters. 
and the minus 0.8 meters if we zoom down here is right there which created our our take up pulley and we we sort of cheated by just entering 0 and 0 for a station elevation and it saw that the the previous flight was a take up pulley and corrected this for us um, for example if i made this 5 meters here you'd see it mapped it back to 5 meters or if i made this minus 2 here it mapped it back to 5 and minus 2 so uh, again, we can cheat and just say 0, 0, and then it corrects everything for us. And again, we'll get into this in a little more detail later, but the idea is, is that rather than having to manually enter all these flights, we can use one simple return turn element. Uh, again, everything else on the carry side, we can insert, delete, um, divide, we can combine elements, say we wanted to combine this element in this sorry say we wanted to combine these two elements I could just click here and click combine just combined it them um, again I can divide them uh, if we made a mistake and we said hey we didn't mean to combine those we just click undo there we go um, and alright let's go ahead and, and let's do one last thing in this tutorial and that is let's say that our tail actually was just a regular pulley here and let's say we had a hanging gravity counterweight here. So in other words, we're going to, if we zoom in on our head station here, I'm going to make a little element that comes back, add a pulley, drop it down around a hanging take-up, come back to a pulley, and then have a return side. So we can simply do that by going to our motor. I'm going to insert a few flights below here. I'm going to say, okay, let's go back maybe three meters, and maybe I'll go down a half a meter. Now I'm going to add a bend pulley. Okay. Now in the next element, I'm going to go straight down. So for a height, I'm going to have, let's say, minus 4 meters. Now we're going to have a take-up pulley. Uh, as, a, as a hint, you can see when I go in here, if I just hit spacebar, it automatically brings up my pull-down list. And I can push the first letter of what I'm looking for. Like if I hit T, it comes up with transition. If I hit T again, take-up pulley. That's just sort of a shortcut. Um, now we're going to go back up four meters, and I guess I need a few more in elements. Insert below, insert below. We need one more pulley. Also, yeah, I can right click. If I right click, it brings up my my list here, same as if I hit spacebar. And a lot of times, rather than starting with the return site, I actually like to put a little short element. I'm going to say 2 meters and minus 0.4. And the reason I like to use a little short element before I do the return strand is simply for the fact that then I can get exactly what my wrap angle is going to be. So if I go down here and I'm going to pan just to move that over, what we have did is we've added a motor, a snub pulley, and a, a gravity take-up system. And if I reset my view, we can see that the return side has automatically, again, mapped our whole return side back to us automatically. All right, I think this is a good place to stop, and in the next tutorial, we'll continue on with building profiles.